Oh my gosh, this is so beautiful. I'm in Hazelton at Kassan. And that mountain's pretty amazing. Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel, Outspoken Wheels on Wheels. My name is Joan and I hope you enjoy my video. Uh, this week is a continuation of my Northern BC trip. Uh, today I start out in Hazelton, BC. I hope you enjoy. Really private little $25 a night campground. I love this, I need to come from the other side. I'm at Hazelton in BC and I'm staying at the Kassan site, which is like a historical indigenous park or something. It's got a museum and whatever. So I was here when I was probably 16 or 17 years old and I'm gonna tomorrow go have a look around. I'm here for a couple of nights. So um, I think I'm gonna really enjoy this if the weather stays nice, even if it doesn't. Able to have my solar panels out, they're facing south, which is great. So they'll get as much sun as they can if the sun is out because this morning when I woke up, both of my Jackeries, my Jackery 500s were dead. So it was a good thing I was leaving. I had to charge one of them by the car I drove for three or four hours today. So I'm at 64% now on one and the other one's still empty. So hopefully we'll get some charge and I'll be able to just relax and enjoy this really pretty little campground. These were um, some First Nations longhouses that were right next to the campground where I stayed. Uh, the artwork on the outside is amazing. I love how they've touched up the paint and made them really colorful. Unfortunately, I couldn't go inside. There were ramps up to the door, but I couldn't get the door opened. So a bit before you get to Smithers, you come across the Seven Sisters which is a mountain with seven peaks, or maybe there's seven mountains. I actually don't know, but it's very beautiful. So still at the Seven Sisters, but I noticed that glacier, and so I tried to zoom in on it. Kind of impressive, actually. And then I sort of scrolled across all of the peaks, and I don't know, you almost could count eight peaks, but... Um, Maybe not. Maybe the little flat one at the end is not really considered a peak. Obviously not, because that would make eight. And I was driving along, and I saw this little guy on the side of the road, and darn for all the bug splatter, I couldn't see him very good. But it was a baby bear. Okay, I wanted to do a video before it gets too dark outside. Uh, I've just, um, I'm on the last day of a holiday that, uh, it was only going to be about five days long, and it's almost two weeks now. I just kept not turning the right way to go home um, whenever I was heading somewhere. So from my hometown, which is in the last video, the my tour of my hometown, um, from there I went west out to the ocean to Prince Rupert. So I will have some videos coming up. Sorry, but I just needed to break in on this uh little monologue um, to say that uh, I did make it to Prince Rupert but I didn't have any video I was depending on my dash cam because there was some beautiful beautiful um, places on the way out to Prince Rupert and for some reason the dash cam didn't record it so um, I'm really having trouble understanding my dash cam and I probably need to go to somebody and get them to teach me how to use it but anyways Sorry that I didn't get any video heading out that way, but I'm hoping to go back next year because it, this was such a great trip that I'm actually going to um, head back out there again next summer. On that, but I just wanted to talk right now about um, how great that was traveling like that. Maybe it's just because it's been a really long time be since I've been able to travel and because the last time I was doing any traveling at all was when I was in Arizona and I broke my legs and I had to come home and I haven't really done a lot um, since then. That's why my videos have been so sparse is there just hasn't really been anything to show. Uh, so this trip 
probably one of my better, if not my most favorite trip. Because when I was dreaming of van life for two or three years before I actually started doing van life, uh, this trip was kind of what I pictured it would be like. Just going and stopping places when I felt like it and moving on when I felt like it and not really having an agenda, not knowing where I was going to go. And because of where I was, because I don't know many people out on that highway, um, there was no pressure to meet up with people or have to be in certain places because I had made plans with people or whatever. It just was so relaxing. Sometimes it got maybe a bit too quiet. I really enjoy being alone, but it might have gone too long sometimes, but that's okay. The next, you know, that might be for a little while in the day and then things pick up and I just really start enjoying it again. But um, anyways, just wanted to say that, but I also wanted to say that uh, I stayed mostly in campgrounds on this trip. But on my way home, I've decided that I've just been spending way too much money in campgrounds, even though campgrounds in the north are cheaper than they are down in the south where I'm from. Uh, I just felt like I was spending too much money. And so last night I stayed in a Walmart in Prince George. And I really, I don't think I've ever had a bad experience at a Walmart. And I really like staying at them and I feel really safe there. And it's kind of fun because in, at some Walmarts I've met new van lifers. Um, it's, it's just, I think Walmart is, when I'm not paying for a campground, Walmart is my kind of go-to as a place to go. And plus, I don't like getting in and out of my car. It takes too much time and effort. So it kills two birds with one stone because I have to get out to get into the back of my van. Before I get into the back of my van, I can run into Walmart, get groceries, do whatever I need to do. And Walmart has everything. So pretty much if there's anything I need, Walmart has it. Uh, so it's really, it's just great to be able to stay at places like that. Um, tonight, because I'm heading back south and communities are pretty, f especially larger ones, are pretty few and far between. Uh, there's not that many Walmarts and really not that many. Uh, I use an app called iOverlander. A lot of you will be familiar with that, but there wasn't a lot of options. I wanted to drive until I got to about a hundred mile house today. And after 100 Mile House, I started looking, like there was no Walmarts. And I didn't want to go past a certain point on the highway because there's a little shop that I want to go to tomorrow. And I didn't want to go past that because it would have been closed by the time I got there tonight. Um, so I had to find a, spa a place to stay. And while I like the challenge of doing that, I'm also a little afraid of it. I'm always afraid of new things and so um, I tried a hundred mile house is a place where I used to cross-country ski so I went up to the ski area to see if I could use the parking lot up there it had a sign and a gate the gate was open but it said this gate can be closed at any time without notice and I didn't want to be waking up in the morning to find out somebody had closed the gate and I couldn't get out so I didn't stay there um, so I drove down the highway a little bit further to this place called Begbie Summit. And there's a lookout, a parking lot for a little hike up to a forestry lookout. And I Overlander says that, that uh, people, you can park there overnight. There's no signs and nobody ever seems to have been bothered by staying here. So I decided, I drove past it. I got off the highway and drove past the turnoff. I saw there was people up there, but I kept on going down this little road that was a dead end road and it would have been a perfect place to park, but there was nobody else there and it just made me nervous. So, and there was nothing to be nervous about. Like I know other van lifers that I follow on YouTube would have stayed in a place like that and thought it was perfect, I think, but, um, like it was a dead end frontage road that just followed the highway. So the highway was right next to it, but there was a big um, berm in between the highway. You couldn't see the highway from there, but you could hear it and you could sometimes see the roofs of maybe the big trucks that were going by, but I just couldn't do it. 
and I had the backup. I knew this place was there. So I drove into here and there was other people already camping here. And so this is where I am tonight. And uh, it's too dark to point the camera out the window. So if I remember, I'll try and videotape it in the morning. If I don't, you can Google it. It's called Begbie Summit and it's the Begbie Lookout parking lot. And it's on I Overlander on highway what highway am I on? 97 South, I think, from Prince, between just south of 100 Mile House, if you're looking for a good place to park. Um, I think that's all I wanted to say, except that uh, I feel like I'm back. Like, I feel like this was a, a good way to get back into van life, and I spent a lot of time figuring out um, I'm going to do a bit of a build in my van, not a permanent one, but I'm going to have some cupboards built. And I'm just waiting for the guy uh, to finish the job that he's working on, and then I will uh, take the van in and we'll talk about what I want to do. But while I'm, because I've had this whole two weeks to camp, I've had a lot of time to think about what I want to do. So hopefully in a not too far distant episode, I'll be able to show you what the build looks like as long as it's not going to cost me too much to do I don't have a lot of money right now so um we'll see how that goes oh and another upcoming episode is going to be I built a box or I'm having a box built for the front drive that you've seen me use in previous videos it's a it's a like an e-bike attachment that attaches to my wheelchair and makes it so that I can go a lot more places and go a lot faster. And I've really wanted to be able to take that thing with me um, on my trip so that I can do hikes and stuff, but um, it's the equipment is too heavy and I can't get it in out of my van. And so I built a, I'm having this cargo box built that has a winch that will lift it in and out. So anyways, those are ideas of uh, videos that are coming up. Hopefully you will uh, stick around and keep watching my videos so that you'll be able to see those when they come up. So you can hear the highway noise a little bit. But this is where I stayed last night. Just in a parking lot that's a hiking trail to a lookout. Where'd the sign go? There it is. And there's even a porta potty there. I mean a little toilet, pit toilet, I guess. And that's the road to the recreation site, I think. And it even has its backyard garden. So beautiful. And just below my spot was also a parking lot. And there was a few people parked down there last night too. So part of van life is always finding a place to park and this is the road that I turned off the highway onto last night and instead of going right into the parking lot I followed this road because I thought there might be something down here. It said it was a dead end road so I thought it might be good to park down there too and it probably would have been a really good place to park but I was kind of afraid and I didn't but I really liked where I ended up anyway so no loss there. Sorry for the video quality, um, my dash cam, I keep bumping the window covers onto the dash cam and it knocks it so that it's way up in the air. Something I'll have to pay attention to in the future. And that's the end of the road up there and the highway still on the left. I mean on the right, sorry. I think this would have been a perfect place to park. Just was too nervous. so because this is on my dash cam I can't turn it the highway is just on the other side of that berm there so you would have heard it but it's a dead-end road I don't think anybody would have come down here it would have been great